I'm Stephen Hamp from Archery Supplies and today I want to talk about my setup for my indoor bow which is the Nationals are in a week's time and I've had nothing but frustration so I want to share with you um, the indoor bow because I've done a review when I set up this bow and basically I was struggling with it to start with and I've been struggling with this bow and my shooting with this bow up to two minutes ago so I thought look I'm going to do a video because if you're struggling let's talk about it so to start with my common thing people say is target archery is really boring now which is fine I, I get it but to hit the center all the time is really hard work and it's hard work as far as the bow setups concerned and the amount which you shoot so for me my outdoor bow So this is my outdoor bow, okay? It's a PSE expression, which I shoot in all my shoots. Now with skinny arrows, so the VIP Victories 166 are little thin ones. On indoor, I've been shooting this bow with little skinny arrows and I shoot, I kind of average around 298. So out of 300, I'm hitting pretty much all my arrows in there and I'm shooting two nines out of 30. So I'm pretty happy with that, okay? So that's what I do with this bow. Um, now I'll just talk about what I've got on this bow. These are atomic stabilizers, which I really like. They look, I think they look cool. I've got eight ounces of weight on the front end here. I've got a V bar set up. These are atomics on the back here. I've got four plus four, eight on that side. And on this side, I've got seven weights. I'm shooting a spot hog premier rest with a blade Axel sight. Shorelock Black Eagle Scope, which is really expensive. I've got some limb savers in the limbs. And I'm shooting Victory VAPs out of this. Now, my scores with this bow are pretty good, 298. Now, national titles are in seven days time, or six days time. 298 is not gonna win me the national title. It will probably go close on a state, in the state scheme of things, if I shoot a 298. It probably won't win it, but I'll probably get close to a medal with the scores I've been shooting practice wise. So I wanted to set up an indoor bow. Now part of the reason I wanted to set up an indoor bow is I wanted to shoot fat arrows and I didn't want to change my target bow like I did last year and shoot fat arrows with it because last year my top score with fat arrows was a 295 which is basically what I shot on the nationals last year but I didn't shoot very well and I was well below what I wanted to do so with that I wanted to set up an indoor bow and I'm sorry if I've been through this before but I'll explain what I've gone through so the indoor bow basically what I wanted to have was I grabbed the same bow because I want to keep my life simple keeping my life simple is a good thing now there's other bows which have less shock than the expression to shoot but I am so comfortable with the expression and shooting it and I am so comfortable with the way I shoot it I didn't want to change the bow now so I grabbed the same bow in gold, same sight, so an XL, XL Achieve carbon sight. I've gone for a different scope this time. This is a shrewd essential scope with a six times lens. The other one I'm only shooting four, four times. And I wanted six times because I wanted to make this target bigger. Now originally when I was shooting the six times, what I found was I felt like I was shaking around a lot. So I actually found it much harder to shoot. So it was kind of, when I'm aiming, I'm like, I feel like I'm shaking around heaps. But now I'm going to just talk about getting the bow balanced and getting that to be settled down. Now I'm shooting a Spot Hog Premier, same as the other bow. Um, I've reduced the size of the dot in the scope to a smaller dot. So with my old scope, basically my dot kind of covered almost the whole nine. Now my dot is kind of inside the 10. Now this time I fitted a specialty peep, which is just there with a, I'm going to get this wrong, a 1 16th number 2 clarifier. So what the clarifier does, it clears up the scope to make the scope clear. Um, now I probably, if I had the 1.5 in stock, at the time when I set this up, I would have gone for 1.5. I do have them now in stock. That was two weeks ago, so now these um, clarifiers to clear up the scope come in 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 3, 4. Basically the higher the power and the less clear the scope is, the different um, clarity you've got to go with. 
Now I've gone for a slightly bigger peep because I want more light to come into my into my scope because the venue where we shoot indoors for the nationals, well, where I'll be shooting, is very low light. So I've been practicing at home where it's basically pitch black. Now, part of the reason why I went for the shrewd scope over the Black Eagle scope, I found the lens very clear. It was a very similar system where it screws in. I really like the bubble system. I found the bubble much clearer. So that's why I went for that. Now the new expression versus my old expression has got a roller slide and a new cable guard. So basically it's all, all a similar setup. Now I've gone for the shrewd onyx stabilizer. Now I put nine ounces of weight there and instead of having a V-bar, I've gone for just a single V-bar at the back with weight at the back. So that's a 14 inch um, shrewd onyx stabilizer with a shrewd um, single V-bar at the back and on the back here I've got four these are four ounce weights the black ones the gold is one ounce so four threes are twelve plus four which is about sixteen so now first off the balance of the bow the balance is pretty good on the bow now this the gold bow is two pounds lighter than the red one and you're going to say why is it lighter because I've got the same amount of weights on both now, the Onyx stabilizers are probably a little bit lighter than the Atomic, but there wouldn't be a lot in it. But what I've got here is I've added weight to the um, red expression. The red bow, I would say, was well, heavier, physically heavier. I would say it was holding and shooting a little bit better than the gold one. But now I've balanced it up, the gold one is definitely aiming better than the red one. So at the moment when I aim, my pin's pretty much set it, set on the gold. Now, when I first set up the gold expression, I found there was a little bit of vibration coming through the bow, well, actually a fair bit. So I fitted these, these are limb saver, um, dampeners on the limbs, and that basically cleared it up. I was just gonna try stuff out. Now, the problem I've been having since the first video I've done was with bare shaft tuning. So when I shot bare shaft, my shafts were here and my bare shaft was off here. So it was, you know, two hand widths away and it was high and to the left. Now you can look at all the documents and I've looked at every document about bare shaft tuning, about how to fix this. I did yoke tuning, I did move my RS, move my RS made zip difference. So moving up and down, left and right made no difference whatsoever. I did the timing on the bow, made no difference. I did tiller tuning, no difference. I went, okay, maybe it's the poundage, maybe my spine's wrong. So I was winding up the bow, winding down the bow, no difference. I couldn't get this, this shaft to move into the center. And I was pretty much over it, okay? So I've been working on this for three weeks, pretty much all the time, and I was over it okay so what i did is i grabbed my red bow which is set up for my little thin arrows and i shot them with my fat arrows because i thought let's just try this and lo and behold they shot in the middle as far as you know it's not bad like the groups the bare shaft was pretty much in the middle of the other one so i'm like well that's pretty good so what's the difference between my gold bow and my red bow now i want to grab this because I thought this was a good idea, and you'll see it in my first video. That this rest, I thought this was a good idea, okay? Because I thought, well, that will sit on there, and it'll actually cradle the arrow really well. Now, this rest, these blades, blades, prongs, I've been using since I started archery. So since I was 12 years old, I'm 47. I've been shooting these. This is one of the most common arrow rests on the market. Anyway, I was at my wits ends, and I thought the only difference between these two bows is this. One bow's got a blade and one bow's got this. So I thought I'll take my blade off, so I'll take this off and fit a blade. As soon as I did that, life was great. So as soon as I did that, my first group was off to the side here, my fletched arrows, and my unfletched arrow was dead in the center of the 10. So what I did is I moved my arrow rest, followed what they say in the instructions, so I moved my arrow rest this way, uh, sorry, this way towards the bear shaft, and my group was there, there's three arrows just there, three little groups. So it was pretty close, and I was like, okay, well, let's just stick to with what the arrow tuning chart says, because my fletched arrows and my unmarked arrows 
I decided to move my RS a smidge to the left again and then move my RS up just a smidge, like just micro adjustment. And the Spot Hog Premier Rest has micro adjustments, so really easy to do. As soon as I did that, I was bang. Now, I just want to talk about this. So I've been shooting 298s with the red bow with thin arrows. My best score with the gold bow has been a 288, and it's been really frustrating for me because I feel I feel like I should be able to shoot it really well, and 288 is not a great score. 288 is going to rank me way down. So I was really, and it's a week to go, so I was really concerned, very, you know, like ring PSE, what's wrong with my bow um, situation. And when I'm shooting, like I shoot, I shoot tens. Okay, with the gold bow, I shoot tens. No question, I shoot tens. But what I did with the gold bow is I'd be shooting eights as well. And I don't, the last time I've shot an eight, I'm not having a big head thing, but the last time I shot an eight with the red bow, I can't even remember. Like, so it's nines and tens. But with the gold bow, I'm shooting eights all the time. Like, and when I say all the time, you know, one in 10 arrows is an eight. And I'm like, I'm not happy with that. Now I've got a few other shooters who are shooting these NVX fat arrows. So I've got a few shooters in WA who are shooting and they feed me back information on them. And they said they're shooting really big scores with them and they're shooting really, really well with them. But for me, I wasn't. And I didn't find them very forgiving at all. And I couldn't work out why. But as soon as I put the blade rest on it, it was that. And I was like, and I felt it because even the bad shots were going to the center. And that was the difference between a tuned bow and an untuned bow. A tuned bow, when a bow is well tuned and well set up, your bad shots still go in the middle. With an untuned bow, you kind of need your good shots to be good for it to go on center. Even the good shots don't go on center. My good shots sometimes were going in the eight. And I was getting a lot of left and right movement with my shots. And this, a week before the Nationals, was a huge issue for me because I've still got issues with recurve because I shoot recurve and compound as well in the Nationals. And my recurve I'm struggling with as well. So I was struggling with my compound and my recurve at the same time. And we'll talk about my recurve later because I'm playing around with various combinations of my recurve at the moment with the Nationals. But I'm clearly not shooting as well with my recurve as I was this time last year. This time last year I came second in the state by one point with the recurve um, and that's just men open but this year I've got the potential to be way down so I've got a week to pull those scores up so when people say oh target archery is boring I get it but you know what you don't shoot that well because if you find it boring you just go bang 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 you're scanning arrows all around the blue and the red and it's like oh that's how I shoot to shoot really really well it requires time persistence bow tuning working on everything like my recurve i've worked on heaps of arrow point weights i've worked on different arrows i'm now working on new limbs and you've got to work on yourself you've got to get yourself shooting really really well so that's where i'm up to but i'm just the purpose of this video is to tell you what i went through to get this bow to shoot well questions from it because i answer questions literally all day on the phone why did i go for a single v bar versus a twin v bar price I prefer the V-bars, um, but it's price. Um, the Shrewd, Shrewd didn't have its V-bars ready, its V-bar brackets. Um, the Shrewd Onyx 14 inch, I think is a fairly expensive stabilizer. Um, so that's why I went for the single as opposed to the double. I do prefer the doubles, but that's why I went for that. But to me, the biggest difference was this, the arrow rest. Um, I don't even understand it. I, I, I played with the tension on the spring to decrease it, and maybe I didn't decrease it enough, but it was clearly striking on the way through, and that was causing the arrow to kick up the bare shaft. But now it's like sweet. So now I go, so now with a week to go before the nationals, now I shoot some indoor rounds with my fat arrows. I shoot, hopefully shoot some big scores with my fat arrows. And then I'm going to set up some 27s, which are the fattest arrows I'm allowed, for indoor and see what scores I shoot with those. So that's where I've got. I've got six days to go before the Nationals. I'm happy with the bow. The bow's shooting really well as far as it's really centered and comfortable. 
I felt like it was shooting better than the red bow, so I didn't want to change the red bow. Um, and I'm comfortable with the arrows. This is the first time I've got 9.3 arrows from gold tip and I couldn't get the spine correct because they are spined to something crazy stiff. So I had issues with that. I've got X cutters, which I've been experimenting with from Carbon Express. But these, the Victory NVX, now the issues with the NVX that I've found, some of the, one of the pin bushings, I can't get the pins in. Um, I found the original knocks that came with were a bit tight. Um, they come with boning F knocks. I found them a bit tight, but I find the quality of the shaft really good. Now they come with a glazed coating too. It's like they call it ice and I've got Vaughn um, shooting in WA and he said we're shooting these in Stramat with a lubricant on the shafts. Basically no Stramat attaches to it. So if you're shooting um, these, the NVXs and onto Stramat for the nationals or for competition, use a lubricant and their Stramat won't attach. I find that it's as smooth as aluminium um, and I will be taking some lubricant to the nationals but for me I'm shooting foam targets down there and they should be pretty easy they have soft centers to shoot at so for me pulling these arrows out of the target shouldn't be an issue for me so but if you are going to a nationals and you don't know what you're shooting at make sure to take lubricant um, scorpion venom AAE scorpion venom probably the best um, arrow lubricant and also the most expensive um, otherwise a lube is pretty affordable lubricant um, some people use soap but um, yeah I'd stick to an oil based lubricant if you're going to use it so I hope that's helped you but for me it's been literally weeks of frustration and often when I say often it's very very rare to have frustration because normally like with the red, red bow when I grab that I grabbed the VAPs, I did a video of it straight away and the first arrows I shot were bullets. Um, they all shot in the middle and I was, I was, I was over the moon because it means I didn't have to do any tuning and they just shot straight off the bat. Um, but this gold bow um, has been the expression with this prong has just been oh, such a pain, like it's nightmare stuff. Um, yeah, I was ready to I was ready to just give up and I couldn't work out why because it's the same cam, same timing, same limbs, everything's identical. So anyway, I hope that's helped you. So I've looked everywhere to find anything on these RRS as far as to see if people suggested that, but contact on the RRS can cause an upward direction in, an um, in a bare shaft and there's no mark on my veins or anything. Okay, so there's no marks. On anywhere to indicate there's any contact with this um, drop away rest probably you're not going to have that issue as well so this is only it applies I think to this type of rest so if the drop away is not dropping quick enough you can also experience the same issue so I'm Stephen Hand from Ushery Supplies all the best with your shooting and I hope this has helped you if you're having trouble or if you're looking to set up an indoor bow to shoot indoors with or a target bow um, and just have fun with it you know and it's most important i get so many questions from people about tuning their bows and am i doing this right am i doing that right it's all a waste of time if you don't shoot arrows you've got to shoot the more you shoot the more consistent you'll be the stronger you'll be it's the most important thing and yes it's important to have your bow set up correctly and like you said you know i'll shoot 288 and the difference between 288 and 298 is just the bow setup. But I'm sitting there plugging away every night. I'm out there at 10 o'clock at night at my house and it's so cold at night time because it's the middle of winter here. And I'm shooting arrows. Every night I'm out there to like 10, 9, 9.30, shooting arrows, trying to get ready for this national. So, and I don't feel like I'm prepared yet. So anyway, I hope that's helped you. But put in the time, because if you're not putting in the time, it ain't going to work. You know, it's no use pulling back your bow there and then there and expecting to have good results. So, so hope that's helped you. And all the best with archery. Thank you. Bye.